Now the 2021 Fox Float X2 and here the 2024 Fox Float X2. They look absolutely identical on the bench in your hand. And according to Fox, there's some reliability upgrades, but I can tell you from personal experience, the 2024 Fox Float X2 is a wildly different shock and not in a good way. So much so I had to retune my fork and make a token adjustment. If you haven't seen this video, this is a 2021 Fox Float X2 in the 2024 laid out in the bench. And let me tell you internally, they're not very different. But if you check out the Fox marketing stuff, there's a whole bunch of upgrades. And in my opinion, they're literally downgrades. So in this video, we're gonna find out why. And it was basically staring me in the face the entire time. And from what I've looked up, no one is talking about what's the big change in this shock. But anyway, this is the main seal head on the 24 and it has two O-rings inside. So that's one of the major reliability updates. So hopefully air doesn't get into the oil. This piece basically seals the oil within the shock. Fox calls it a bearing, but we'll call it a seal head. Now staring me in the face of my own three videos and the Fox instructions is this foam O-ring. It's a negative air token. And let me tell you, it makes the shock ride completely different. So all we gotta do is take it apart or take it out of the shock and see if it rides like the old, better, older Fox Float X2. The 24 Fox Float X2 here is wildly different in feel from all other Fox Float X2s I have rode. So I pulled it off the bike and I'm trying to look for clues here and I'm like 237, I usually run like 250 for 30% sag. So that negative token is lowering the main air pressure, making this shock more reliable a little hidden upgrade from Fox. To remove the negative token from the shock, we just have to remove the outer air canister. I'm gonna show you a little trick and how to squeeze that negative token out without removing the oil. There's a video linked in the description on the Pacifics on how to remove the outer air canister and full service the X2 and it's not super difficult at home, so send it. Once the outer foreskin or air can is removed from your shaft, this will expose just the oil portion. As we can see with the foam O-ring is the negative token within the shock. It has a very, very tight fit and technically you should take the seal head out to remove it, but that would entail bleeding the shock and when you're a mechanic, it's all about taking shortcuts and getting stuff done in time. Essentially take a plastic pry tool, the one you remove your door panel with on your car and stick it under there and make sure it's soft and it's not gonna scratch the stanchion and you can bend it over the seal head and get rid of that negative token. Assemble the outer air canister to OEM specifications and make sure you tighten to good and tight on the lower eyelet and you're ready to go back together. So this is the negative chamber within the Fox Float X2 and it's absolutely massive and that's why this shock has so much small bump sensitivity. This foam o-ring is a massive negative token hence why the shock rides so much different than all the other previous models. Now with all the marketing aside, realistically this five cent piece of foam was the real reliability upgrade because it forces you to run lower pressure so it won't cavitate. Yes, it does have two o-rings in the seal head. Now with the negative token removed from the X2, it's feeling like the older version definitely has some increased small bump sensitivity. So I'm going to go off this hook to flat and yes, it feels identical to the old one. So essentially remove this token. If you don't like the way your 2024 Fox float X2 warranty shock rides. Now on aggressive riding, the negative token wasn't an issue, but the shock does feel like it gets deeper into its travel without a negative token. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you would know that negative tokens do increase mid-stroke support at the compromise of small bump sensitivity. So personally, I like it without the negative token installed because it's just a more plush ride. It's more quote unquote coil like. I was able to return to my tried and true settings of the older Fox Float X2 with maxed out high speed compression and nearly dead slow rebound. To put this on a piece of paper, Without the negative token, you're gonna have increased small bump sensitivity. The shock feels better on DH trails, feels more like a coil, and essentially makes it harder to set up and tune the shock. 
why many people are frustrated by the Fox Float X2. With the negative token installed, simply put, it feels like Rock Shock. It requires less air pressure in the shock with the negative token, so technically it's more reliable. I found with the negative token installed, it jumps better, it feels better on blue flow trails, it has more mid stroke support, and it requires less positive tokens. So basically it's easier to set up with the negative token installed. The compromise is it has less small bump sensitivity. In my perception, it feels like it has less traction on DH trails. So here's the negative token out of that shock. And it's gonna stay out of the shock because I love my small bump sensitivity. The 38 and the X2 are the best looking suspension system on the market with the best marketing. But I just completed the worst trade in history because I just traded all my Fox stuff for Sun Tour. So click that video on the screen to see what function over form looks like or feels like, I guess, because it's suspension.